uh, their medical application journey. Um, so I'm really looking forward to talking to you today um, about our School of Medicine and telling you why it is the top choice uh, for international students and not only international students, but also US and Canadian nationals. So um, today we have 80% of our students from uh, North America and 20% of our cohort are from um, the rest of the world. So this is St. George's University School of Medicine. As you can see, it is a gorgeous purpose-built campus. And we were actually founded 44 years ago. So we're all here today because you're all interested in pursuing medicine um, as a future career. Um, and what a noble uh, choice it is. So I'm here today to talk to you about the, um, you know, your choice of a medical school. And I know it's gonna be the, one of the most important decisions you make in your life. Um, and so what I'm going to do today in today's presentation, I'm going to cover top 10 questions, which I think um, most of you are already thinking about. Um, and then once I'm done with the presentation, I have an SGU alumni, so a graduate who completed her clinical rotations in the UK, and it's in the final uh, stages of starting her residency um, in the UK. So really exciting. And that is uh, Miss Chloe. Moses and she will be joining us um, after I complete the presentation and then once Chloe is done uh, with her talk we'll then move on to a Q&A session to address any questions you may have. So um, St. George's University School of Medicine has graduated just over 18,000 successful physicians. So just over 18,000 licensed and practicing physicians who are currently practicing in all 50 states in the United States, um, in Canada, in the UK, and in over 50 countries around the world. The vast majority of students honestly join us because their ultimate goal and dream is to practice medicine abroad, particularly the vast majority of those want to actually practice medicine in the US. So the number one question I'm going to address today is will I get a US residency? Now, for those of you who are interested in, um, you know, practicing medicine in the US, there are two criteria that you need to meet. One um, of those is for you to be able to complete a US residency at a US hospital in the USA. So we're going to talk about will St. George's help you with that? For us, 92% of our international students were able to obtain a US residency upon graduation. And this is a percentage that we're extremely proud of because if you look at the percentage for international students at US medical schools in the USA, then the percentage of those being able to obtain a US residency upon graduation has consistently been just below 60% for the last few years. And for us, it's not 92%. And that actually has led us to being uh, the number one provider into first year US residencies. And we have been the number one provider for the last 11 years. And what that means is there isn't a medical school in the world that places the same number of graduates that we do onto first year US residencies. And it's something that we're extremely proud of. Um, so back in 2020, 1,110 of our graduates obtained a US residency upon graduation. In 2021, we have 1,067 of our graduates um, having been able to obtain a residency to date but obviously that number is still counting um, as our students head towards graduation. So what we're saying is there isn't another medical school in the world that provides more new doctors into the US healthcare system. Um, St. George's University School of Medicine is actually the largest source of licensed physician for the entire US workforce. What a statistic to have. We're extremely proud of this figure. So as you can see, just over 11,000 of our students, um, of our graduates from our 18,000 plus are currently licensed and are currently practicing in the US, which makes us the largest source of physicians for the entire US workforce. Number two um, is Indiana University School of Medicine. And if you know anything um, about that school, then it's a US medical school based in the US and it's been around well over a hundred years. For us, 
Uh, we are a medical school based in the Caribbean, and we've been around for 44 years, and we've still been able to um, achieve such a statistic. So extremely proud um, of the cohort and how well our graduates have done year on year. Now, what St. George's University has to offer you is a very personalized approach when it comes to guiding you and supporting you from the day you start your medical studies with us. And we do that through a number of different offices. And one of those offices is our Office of Career Guidance and Student Development. And what they do is they support you in developing a personalized residency strategy. And that's really important in your ability to obtain a residency appointment on graduation. So we've got, um, you know, advisors who have got just over 40 years of experience um, in assisting international students with their residency applications, uh, which is, um, you know, something tremendous without a doubt. So what they do is they make sure that you are fully aware of, you know, students who have had similar scores as yourself, similar profiles, similar interests, um, and similar volunteering and work experiences and what they've been able to achieve in terms of residency placements. Another really important factor as well is they really focus on um, assisting you with your CV, your personal statement, with preparing you in terms of interviewing skills um, and particularly with the residency application itself. So they ensure that you're always applying to residencies that you highly qualify for and ones that you are a good match to. So that's something that's really essential when it comes to your residency placement. Now we'll move on to the next question that I want to address in our 10 questions today. And that question is, how will SGU's clinical network help me obtain a residency? So we spoke about the ability of obtaining a residency and it's important in um, your path uh, towards being licensed um, and you know practicing in the US. Um, how will we help you um, in terms of a network? This is where really we want to focus on, do you know, um, you know what you're interested in terms of obtaining a residency in? And this is where our network really comes into place. So over the years, what we've been, what we've been doing is we've been building um, a network of affiliated hospitals and clinical centers. So at the moment, we have 70 plus affiliated hospitals and clinical centers in in the US and in the UK. And that's something that's really important because what will happen is students will um, complete their clinical rotations, which are your last two years of studies with us. And you'll complete those clinical rotations at one of our affiliated hospitals uh, or clinical centers. So you're still learning, you're still a student, but instead of learning on campus um, in a lecture room or a laboratory or in a small group setting, you're actually learning through through clinical training at one of our affiliated hospitals. And it's really important for us to expose students to an international experience. So our students are exposed to a number of different uh, medical healthcare system throughout their medical studies with us. So that's really essential. And it gives you a brilliant opportunity during those two years to really build your personal, your personal and professional network, which is really important. You could have physicians um, that you've trained with with, write you a letter of recommendation for your residency application. And it really gives you that time to focus on your career path and to focus on what program you want to obtain a residency in. So this just gives you a bit of an understanding in terms of what kind of clinical support we offer international students. Um, so at each of our uh, affiliated hospitals, we have a director of medical education, we have a clerkship director, we have clinical faculty, we have medical education coordinators. And then at the university itself, you will still have a dean of medicine, dean of clinical training, associate deans, department chairs, placement and clinical coordinators and the Office of Career Guidance and Student Development, all of whom are there to support you through your clinical rotations and to support you in obtaining a residency in a program that you are interested in and in a program that you highly qualify for. So that's really essential. We're going to move on now to question number three. Does my education at St. George's University prepare me for the USMLE? Now, 
In order for you to be licensed um, and to practice medicine in the US, you need to meet two criteria. The first one, which we mentioned, which is obtaining your US residency. And the second one is for you to pass your USMLE step one, step two, and step three. So the USMLE is actually the United States Medical Licensing Exam. And step one basically tests your basic sciences knowledge. Tests, uh, step two um, tests your clinical skills and clinical clinical knowledge. And step three is one that you will take during your residency. We have outstanding results when it comes to USMLE. So for SGU students from 48 different countries, um, we had a 49 first time pass rate on USMLE step one in 2019. And that is on par with US medical schools that are based in the US. So extremely proud of that. Um, I just wanted to give you a bit of an outline on the program itself. So what we offer is an MD degree, which is a postgraduate course of study, and it is a US style curriculum. So it's a medical doctor degree. And there are a number of different different um, entry levels depending on a student's academic background. So we've got a four-year MD degree, a five-year MD degree, a six-year MD degree, and a seven-year MD degree. I'll do two examples today just because of the time constraints during our presentation. As an example, if you already have a Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Sciences or any related field, then you would be eligible to apply for our four-year MD degree, which would mean you would do two years years of basic sciences, followed by two years of clinical rotation. Now, for the first year of basic sciences, you learn about the basic principles of medicine, and you can do that year either on our main campus in Grenada, or you could do that year at our partner university in the UK, which is Northumbria University in the city of Newcastle. The second year of basic sciences, where you will learn about the principles of clinical medicine, it's mandatory for you to do that year on our main campus in Grenada, which is our true blue campus. Then you would move on to your last two years of clinical rotations. So for the first year of clinical rotations, you do 42 weeks of core rotations. So you'd be subjected to a number of different specialities, including surgery, pediatrics, and much more. And as I said, you would do those clinical rotations and learn through clinical training at one of our affiliated hospitals um, or clinical centers. So 70 plus in the US or in the UK. You'd then move on to your last year, which is your second year of clinical rotations, and you do 38 weeks, and they're more directed towards your electives, your sub-electives, and your internships. Again, you would do them at one of the 70 plus affiliated hospitals and clinical centers in the US and in the UK. It's at that point that you would graduate, um, and you would have an MD degree, so a medical doctor degree from St. George's University School of Medicine. Um, and then you would hopefully move on to start your residency program. As I said, the vast majority of students who join us join us because they're looking at the US pathway. However, there's been more and more interest in the UK pathway and the alumni joining us today, Chloe, will tell you about her experience doing her clinical rotations in the UK and her experience as she is in her last stages of starting a residency in the UK. Now, another example we'll talk about, for example, is a five-year MD degree. So if, for example, you've got three full A-levels, chemistry, biology, and a third science, then you would be eligible to start um, our five-year MD degree, which would mean you do one year of preclinical sciences, and you could do that year either on our main campus in Grenada, at our partner university in the UK, Northumbria University, or at our partner university in India, which is Ramaya University. You then move on to do two years of basic sciences, followed by two years of clinical rotations. So um, the same would apply, for example, for the six or the seven year. So as you can see, what we're offering students is an opportunity to be exposed to a number of different medical healthcare systems throughout their MD studies. And that is truly one of our biggest competitive advantages. And it gives students the opportunity to really um, you know, expose themselves to new cultures, um, give themselves an opportunity to really build their personal and professional networks. So it's absolutely fantastic opportunity. So just a recap on our locations, 
Main location is Grenada, the Caribbean, and then partner universities are um, Northumbria University in the UK and Ramaya University in India. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Northumbria University and the partnership that we have there. So we established this partnership back in 2007, and we've had uh, 1,700 students go through the SGU on a new program to date. Um, so it has been, without a doubt, um, quite a popular um, program for students. Um, and as I said, it gives them the opportunity to be exposed um, to the UK medical healthcare system. It really gives them an opportunity to build on new cultures and really develop, um, you know, professional networks within the UK as well. So without a doubt, it is um, really gives them a competitive advantage when applying to their residencies, because you will definitely stand out um, of the crowd. Now we're moving on to question number four. How will I be supported to succeed in my medical education? This is a really important section because it's important for you to understand what kind of level of support is being offered. Um, so at St. George's University School of Medicine, you will be offered a very personalized approach when it comes to us guiding you and supporting you to succeed in your medical career. Um, as I said, there are a number of different offices that have put into place to support our students, we definitely offered uh, offer an unparalleled um, level of student support services. And one of the main competitive advantages is 75% of your studies um, are conducted through small group learning. Um, and with the small group learning, you're actually um, at a ratio of eight to one. So for every eight students, there's one faculty member. So you can imagine what kind of a personalized learning experience that is for you. Um, what's really important to note as well is every year we welcome just over 1,100 students um, onto our School of Medicine. That's quite a large number for you to be uh, part of, and we definitely do not want you to be lost within a crowd. So what we do is prior to term one, each and every student is allocated to one of our nine colleges within our School of Medicine. So instead of you being one of 1,100, you would become one of um, 110 to 120 students. Um, and what will happen um, is you will remain in that college throughout your studies with us. So each and every one of those colleges are their own learning communities. So you'll have your own advisors, your own deans, your own faculty, um, your own associate director and your own director. And each and every one of those members are there to ensure that you you excel and succeed um, and they're there to fully support you so you know as I said each of those um, colleges become their own learning community so the focus without a doubt is on small group learning the focus is on student wellness and support and on developing your uh, personal and uh, professional development and that is something that is um, essential. Another thing as well in terms of support is we offer a dedicated support system that focuses on your success, as I just mentioned. With SGU, what you get are the benefits of a larger institution. So, uh, you know, you've got the, the quality and the quantity of faculty. Um, you've got the dedicated purpose-built um, facilities and resources. And most importantly, you've also got that really um, vast and international alumni network. So those are definitely, without a doubt, benefits of a larger institution. But at the same time, you get the benefits of a much smaller institution when it comes, for example, to the uh, level of support you are offered in terms of your education itself. And that really comes down to, as I said, the fact that 75% of your learning um, is conducted in small group settings. And that is um, essential to your support. Now, moving forward um, as well, I just wanted to give you an idea about our faculty. So all our faculty members are MD or PhD uh, holders. Uh, we've got just over um, 2,000 faculty members, 1,500 are clinical faculty. Uh, we've got just over 460 faculty based in uh, Grenada, the Caribbean. And we uh, always have just over 200 visiting professors. 
Um, so that really tells you, um, you know, what kind of diversity we're offering in terms of those faculty members' backgrounds. So they've all, um, you know, previously taught at um, renowned um, medical schools um, or really top universities in the US and abroad as well, including Harvard. Um, another office I wanted to tell you about as well um, comes through our Department of Educational Services. So the Department of Educational Services has about 44 MD uh, faculty members um, who offer 450 different workshops on a weekly basis to our students. And the idea behind all of that is to ensure that students are fully supported. So when you join SGU, we encourage students to go through a learning assessment. And the idea for a learning assessment is for you to learn how you learn best. So students are completely different. You're all different. You all have different strengths, different weaknesses, different learning preferences. So when you learn how you learn best, you're actually looking at maximizing your capabilities and definitely achieving your fullest potential. And that without a doubt is core cool to your success. Um, obviously as well, the workshops focus as well on you know, time management skills, study skills, test-taking skills, note-taking skills, study groups, um, learning techniques. So these are all really essential um, to you learning how you learn best. We also have the international office and student support. Um, so they will basically support our international students, you know, if they need it in terms of English as a second language, academic enhancement programs, um, major lectures being recorded for students to refer back to. Um, they offer the mentoring program. And obviously the fact that the faculty have a very international national experience, as I mentioned. So two really important factors here um, are the tutoring and the mentoring opportunities. So the tutoring comes after you complete a uh, term one with us. So if you have had exceptional results in term one, you're given the opportunity to tutor um, you know, the incoming term one students the following term. And it really gives you an opportunity um, to really expand um, on skills um, through your tutoring techniques. And the other factor as well is mentoring. So mentoring is basically where they will link you to a student who is currently in their year three or year four. Um, and they will mentor you not only in terms of the program and in terms of learning skills, but they will also mentor you in terms of, for example, you know, showing you around campus uh, or telling you about, you know, the best places to eat um, on the island. So just simple like this, just to ensure that you feel that you are definitely part of the SGU family. Now, the fifth question I want to move on to is where will my SGU medical degree allow me to practice medicine? And I'm sure this is really important because I know many of you are joining us from all around the world today. So what's really important for you to know is to just look at the facts. So we have just over 18,000 alumni and they're currently licensed and practicing in all 50 states in the United States, in Canada, in the UK and in over 50 countries around the world. Now, what you need to know is that we are a fully accredited institution, and that allows us to be approved and licensed by a number of different um, bodies in the US and abroad. So we are actually uh, recognized um, and licensed by Grenada Medical and Dental Council, who they themselves are recognized um, by the DCFMEA. Um, and, you know, that is really important. But obviously, at the end of this presentation, we have a Q&A session. If you have any questions, you can um, please do put them in the chat. Otherwise, I've also included my contact details. You can always reach out to me if there's a specific question to you that you would like answered. Now, moving on to a softer part of the presentation, how will my life be like at SGU? So you saw at the beginning of the presentation our gorgeous and purpose-built campus, which is our true blue campus, and it is on the beautiful and sunny island of Grenada. So 
It's a gorgeous campus. It is 100% safe. So we um, have a free shuttle bus that runs from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. And that's within a five mile radius of the university. Uh, we also have student accommodation on premises and it's mandatory for you to stay um, on campus when it comes to um, student living for your first year of studies. And we also have a number of different, um, you know, facilities um, that are available on campus. So we have 65 buildings actually on campus, and that not only includes our lectures, our halls, our study centers, our libraries, but we also have um, a number of, you know, uh, we have a gym on, on campus, we have a cafeteria, we have a number of different outlets, uh, we have a number of different restaurants, we have our own private beach. Um, so I'll get to you in a little bit when it comes to to that. Um, we also have a number of different clubs that are available to students. So we have 65 different clubs available to students. You know, some of them are spiritual, some of them are um, academic, some of them are religious, some of them are athletic. Um, so anything you may you know, have an interest in, I'm sure you will find it, um, you know, at SGU. We also have a number of outdoor sports, obviously being in the location that we are in, and we have a number of different recreation opportunities. So the, here's a fun fact for you. 80% of our students are scuba certified by the time they graduate from SGU. And this is really uh, such a fun fact because uh, Grenada is actually uh, one of the top five diving destinations. And last year it was voted as the top one diving destination in the Caribbean. So the students work really hard, uh, but I'm glad that they find some time to enjoy um, the ocean. We also have a number of different other opportunities such as yoga, um, you know, painting, uh, we have running, basketball, um, uh, you know, soccer, and a number of, of other opportunities that are available to students. Now, question number seven uh, that we've always gotten, but obviously the answer has been slightly different during COVID. Um, how can I see uh, where I'll be studying medicine? So uh, pre-COVID, uh, we used to run an initiative which uh, was CSGU. But for those of you who may be looking at applying to us, um, you know, uh, next year or the following, uh, this initiative hopefully will um, you know, resume by then, as soon as um, things are safe. Um, so basically, what that meant is, you know, if you had an offer letter from SGU, we always welcome students to come and see us. Um, so they'd fly over, you know, come and see the campus, they'd be given a tour of the campus, they'd sit into a number of different lectures, you would be linked to a number of different current students, so they can talk to you about their own experience. And you would be uh, connected to a number of different faculty members who are relevant to your um, entry level and that is really essential because we want you know we want to support you in making the decision and we know it's one of the most important decisions you will make in your life now if you enroll at SGU you actually get reimbursed um, the flight cost and you get reimbursed the hotel cost uh, for up to three nights so we're committed uh, just as you are um, into you coming to, to see the campus hopefully as I said you know in the near future or in the coming future, this um, initiative will resume. But for the time being, unfortunately, it is not available. Another really important question that we get, which I'm sure many of you are thinking of today, is, is there financial aid? Because at the end of the day, if you're looking at a future in medicine, obviously it's a huge investment. Um, and that's in, times of, that's in terms of time, in terms of effort, but also it's a huge financial investment. So there are some scholarship opportunities that are available to international students. Um, at the moment, 30% of our international students are on some form of scholarship. And that's if you know, they are on their preclinical years. For the students who are entering a four year MD degree, 75% of those have received some form of scholarship. And scholarships are given on a number of different merits, including academic, need-based, humanitarian, and the deans awards. 
That leads me on to the next question, how can I apply? So today I am joined by our fantastic partner, um, SI UK, um, and they are here to support you throughout your application process. So please do reach out to them after uh, today's session um, and uh, they will help you with the application process. They will collect your supporting documents and submit an application on your behalf. Um, once your application is reviewed, if successful, um, you would be offered an interview, which would be a virtual interview with an SGU alumni, and then a decision will be made, um, and hopefully you will be offered a place at um, SGU, and you travel to Grenada or the UK to start studying medicine. So for, for further details about the application process, please, please do reach out um, to SI UK. Um, I know that Ravina and Rabia will definitely put their contact details into the chat so you can reach out to them. Now, um, the last question I wanted to address today is why is SGU the place to start my medical career? And this is really important. And this is really for us to take a recap on what we've discussed today. When it comes to SGU, we without a doubt have exceptional residency placement rates. So as I said, we are the number one provider into US residency placements and we have been for the last 11 years. So there isn't a medical school in the world that places the same number of graduates that we do onto first year US residency placements. Um, the other thing as well is our network of 70 plus affiliated hospitals and clinical centers in the UK and the US. So that gives you an international exposure uh, when, um, you know, completing your last two years of clinical rotations, and it gives you an opportunity to be exposed to a number of different medical healthcare systems, and most importantly, an opportunity to focus on your career and the program you want to complete a residency in. Um, another thing as well is small group experiences with the benefit of a larger school. So it's, again, as we said, 75% of your learning will be in small group settings, so a very personalized learning experience, which not many medical schools um, can offer you. And then without a doubt as well, outstanding USMLE results. So for those of you who are considering um, a career in the US, you know, the USMLE is essential. You need to pass your USMLE step one, step two, and step three. And then lastly, state of the art, uh, teaching facilities, accommodation, and student life opportunities as we have mentioned. Another really important factor as well is just for you, as I said, to look at the track record that we've had. So first of all, as you know, um, from today's presentation, we are the largest source of physicians for the entire US workforce. And that is in terms of the number of graduates who are currently licensed and practicing in the US largest source of physicians. The other thing as well is SGU graduates have practiced at all of the top US hospitals as stated by the US News and the World Report. So you can see these are the top 20 hospitals in the US and our SGU graduates have practiced in all of them. So imagine the opportunities that you will have as a US, um, as an SGU graduate, you will join um, a network um, of international, um, you know, alumni from all around the world. And it is an exceptional network to be part of. Um, I'll leave you with a testimonial to read um, for a few seconds uh, from one of our graduates um, who joined us from the UK. Fantastic. Um, so thank you very much for your time today. I'm going to leave um, this slide on. These are my contact details. Please feel free to take a screenshot, uh, scan the code, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me uh, via email or contact me on my work number, or you can always schedule a one-to-one -one meeting uh, using Calendly. Um, I would like to welcome our SGU alumni, <coughs> Miss Chloe. Chloe, are you with us today? Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, welcome, Chloe. Okay, that's good. Hey, hi. 
So Chloe, would you like to tell us a little bit about your SGU experience? Um, tell us how it was for you for basic sciences. Tell us about your experience yeah. with clinical rotations and how you've been preparing to start your foundation year one. So sorry, Chloe, just a quick introduction for those of you who okay. weren't at the beginning. Um, you know, I today in today's presentation, I focused on the US pathway. Chloe is here to give you a completely different perspective, which is the UK pathway. Thank you again, Chloe, for taking the time um, to conduct today's presentation. And the floor is yours. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. So um, like I've already been introduced, my name is Chloe. Um, I'm born in London. Um, I started my um, kind of medical career in the UK. Um, I completed a degree in biomedical science and um, I really enjoyed it, but I wanted to do a little bit more. So I decided to go on to study medicine in Grenada. So I started that in August 2016 and I graduated in September just last year. So firstly, um, the school is an incredible opportunity for those looking for studying outside of their home, um, but also a comfortable and safe environment to go to. Um, it's, it was a really great experience. And I think that it's kind of curved my life career for the rest of, you know, the rest of my life, because it was honestly just one of the best experiences ever. So when I started, I was a little bit um, apprehensive, so to speak, because I obviously was born in the UK and it was a, it's a very American system. Um, however, I was fully supported there. Um, I was, um, before I started, I was given the opportunity to meet up with um, certain faculty members um, that made sure that I understood what I had to do and to make sure I was up to speed with everything. So I never felt like I was behind at all. Um, and that support continued throughout all of my basic sciences. And the basic sciences, um, again, incredible opportunities. So for example, um, anatomy is a subject that we would have to take. And um, in the anatomy lab, there's cadavers, um, you know, real life people, which a lot of um, other medical schools, you wouldn't get to experience, you know, the hands-on and, um, you know, such good experience with um, these kind of things. So, um, yeah, like I was saying, um, I just felt really supported. Um, and then um, the basic sciences towards the end of them, uh, they prepare you for the US MLE. So term five, because um, there's five terms of the basic sciences, uh, that is, you know, almost your step prep. Um, so you get to do, do a lot of work towards your preparation so that when you do finish medical school, you're in really good standing to take the exam and pass first time, which is obviously what you all need. Um, so other than the step prep, we also were given the opportunity to go to a hospital in Grenada once a week. And that, again, was a great experience because we got a lot of hands on experience with a lot of renowned doctors from all over the world, all over the Caribbean and not just Grenada. Um, and at the end of that, um, you know, you complete your exams and then you can pick where you want to do your clinical rotations. Um, so being born in London, I decided to take my clinical rotations in London. And I picked a hospital that wasn't too far from my house. Um, so it was really good that I had the opportunity um, because there are a lot of hospitals that you can pick from. And um, in the hospital, again, we were supported with teaching from the different faculty. Again, it was the doctors from the hospital uh, liaising with the, you know, the school to make sure that it was a structured uh, learning process. So again, that was really good. Um, and um, yeah, and then after that, it's quite easy to um, transition onto the graduation process. And then you can decide whether you want to stay in the UK or go to the US if you've done your rotations there. So I've decided to stay into the UK path. Um, so it's not been too difficult to transition. I've had to complete um, two exams um, regulated by the General Medical Council that's in the UK, and that's the PLAB 1 and the PLAB 2. And um, because of all my Grenadian experience, it has given me a good, you know, a good direction to focus on for those exams. And I haven't felt like, again, I had to struggle because they teach you so well there and the baseline is so good, you're able to apply it to a lot of different exams. Um, so, um, yeah, and that's basically the process now. And then I've started my foundation program in August. And so just a little bit more about Grenada. Um, so um, as you've already been told, it's extremely safe. 
there's a lot of beaches um, around. There's lots to explore. If you like to travel, if you like to hike, it's all there. Um, there's a lot of different societies in the um, university. So there's the religious societies, there's church on Sundays, uh, a lot of sports groups, a lot of um, groups for those uh, with significant others. So you don't have to just be the person going to the school. You know, your family members will also be included. Um, you know, if you have children, there's also a lot of activities for the children as well. Um, as you've already been told about the gym, it's fantastic. And there's lots of opportunities to, um, you know, obviously after you've finished your studying, to unwind. Um, there's restaurants, there's shops, there's grocery stores all on campus. So you don't have to travel far if you need anything. And most importantly, there's a lot of study spaces. So, you know, there's a lot of whiteboards and, you know, computer areas where you can just go and, you know, focus. You don't have to find the stress of where are you going to study um, obviously, the library, again, is fantastic. And, you know, you can contact anybody at any time and they'll be happy to support you. So that's it, really. I hope that was a good uh, little introduction. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Chloe. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm so glad, you know, you've had such an exceptional experience. And there's no doubt there without a doubt. But, you know, congratulations on doing so well yourself as well, because it's all the hard work that you do as well. It's not just the support that you're offered. Thank you. So, Chloe, if you don't mind staying with us, we're going to hold mm -hmm. a Q&A session. If anyone would like to address a question, particularly to uh, Chloe, do let us know if you have any questions about the UK pathway and you'd like to learn a bit more from Chloe as well, do let us know. Um, I think we have a few questions in the chat. Um, so... Um, just to, I'll go ahead and read those in the chat at the moment, um, just to let you know, uh, we are not, um, we're a completely different university to St. George's University in London. Um, so we are St. George's University School of Medicine in Grenada, the Caribbean. We have partnerships with two universities and those two are Northumbria University in the city of Newcastle in the UK. And the other is Ramaya University in India. Now, uh, the next question from Kevin, how can I study medicine at your university? Do you offer any full scholarships? Um, so um, the application process itself, as I said, the best thing for you to do is to um, get in contact with SIUK. They will help you with the application um, process. So with completing the application and uh, guiding you on the supporting documents that you will require. There are scholarships opportunities, as I said, so for MD4, for example, as we said, 75% of students are on some form of scholarship uh, for preclinical international students are about 30% of international students are on some form of scholarship. Uh, but unfortunately, we do not offer any full scholarships. Um, there are some scholarship opportunities available, but we do not offer any full scholarships at all, um, unfortunately. So, um, we recruit, next question, we recruit onto, we recruit international students onto the School of Medicine and the program that we recruit onto is the MD program, so the medical doctor, um, uh, the medical, um, the medical doctor degree. Uh, last question, do you need a visa to study? So um, I'm sure Chloe can tell you as well, obviously it's very different for um, different nationalities, but just to give you a bit of an understanding, um, if obviously you're starting on our main campus in Grenada, uh, the visa process, again, you'll be fully supported by SIUK, but just to give you an understanding, general understanding now, uh, visas are issued upon arrival for um, students um, who are joining us in Grenada and for students who are starting in the UK. So if, for example, you decide you want to start at Northumbria University, um, then you would be looking at, um, you know, obtaining a CAS. We will provide you with a CAS letter from Northumbria University and you will go through the same, the same procedures you would go through um, as followed by uh, the UK VI. Uh, again, we have a visa support team who will fully support you once you're at that stage. And also you'll be fully supported by SIUK at that stage as well. So in terms of residency years, um, they are um, slightly different. Um, so for example, if we take, you know, just a traditional US residency path, then you'd be looking at about a three year residency route um, 
you know, before you're able to uh, sit the local state board exam. For the UK, it's slightly different. So there's foundation year one, foundation year two, and then there are completely two different paths, whether you want to become a GP or whether you want to become a consultant. And the number of years would vary. So you're looking at anything between three to five um, after your foundation year one and foundation year two, depending on the route you decide to take. So as I said, we do not offer any other bachelor's or master's degree in nursing or such. What we offer is an MD uh, degree uh, through our School of Medicine for international students. Um, and, um, you know, you are looking at a number of different entry levels, as I said, depending on your academic history. Uh, moving on, do you offer credits? So it would be if you have completed a Bachelor of Science, um, then you would be eligible to apply for our four year MD degree. We do not offer any credit based on bachelor's degree. So you're just eligible to apply for our shortest um, program, which is the four year MD degree. Any other questions we can assist with today? Anything specific for Chloe? Chloe, would you like to just talk about what route you're looking at? Are you looking at um, you know, becoming a GP or a consultant? Yeah, um, so um, I just wanted to quickly touch on one of the questions for, from Severa. Uh, does the yeah. university offer masters in public health? They do actually. So once you've completed your base, uh, your whole degree, they actually give you the opportunity to do a master's and they fund it for you. So if that's something you want to be um, to do later to become more competitive, then and that's something that's available to everybody once you've finished your degree. So I just thought I would throw that in there. Yeah, cool. And um, yeah, and um, so yeah, basically um, I would like to become a GP um, after I've done my F1 and my F2, um, which I'm starting this year in um, August. Um, that is my route that I'm planning for so far. <laughs> Fantastic, well, best of luck with that. Um, so the way it works, just to give you a bit of an idea, obviously, when you're applying to a medical school, um, the applications themselves go through um, a committee. Um, so the committee will review um, all your transcripts and they will also review, you know, um, other supporting documents. Because, you know, when it comes to accepting students onto a school of medicine, I'm sure Chloe knows this, uh, you know, we're not just looking at academics. We're also looking to ensure that you have the characteristics to become a successful, um, you you know, future medic. Any other questions we can assist with today? Ravina, Rabia, um, anything that's come in to you privately that maybe isn't um, yeah. showing everyone? Just want to say a big thank you to you, Bethina, and to Chloe for the presentation and kind of giving us um, insight into the university as well. Um, yeah, we've got a few questions. I know you've kind of answered most of them already, um, but just having a look at some of them now. Um, I think there's someone who's asking about if there is a dedicated kind of tutor in place when they're coming into the university who can like advise them um, throughout the course of their studies or anything to do with exam prep in particular. Chloe, do you want to take that just so you can talk yeah. on your own experience? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, there is somebody, um, like I said, so when I came in from the UK system, they offered support in terms of like an academic program that I could attend every week, um, just so I could go over lectures and, and if I needed any help with anything. And then that's as well as the DES. Uh, which is the Department of Educational Services, which again, you can meet with them on a weekly or even a daily basis if you need to. They can help support you throughout your exams, tell you what you need to do. If you're unsure about the technique, they can help you with your technique. And if you're unsure about the content, then you can get in touch with the lecturer and they're happy to see you, sit down, go through it with you. And they really do support you really well. And I'm speaking from like personal experience. Um, you know, I really felt, you know, well supported. They don't just kind of leave you to, you know, get on with it and you know, if you're not sure about something, just leave you uncertain. There's definitely someone to help all the time. Sounds Thank great. You. Yeah. That's great to know okay. actually for students as well. Um, carrying on from that point, there's a very similar sort of question, um, something that you mentioned earlier, Bethina, about learning um, assessments. So I think the student probably joined in halfway through and I was just asking if you can kind of um, summarize that bit again about learning assessments. 
Yeah, so one of the things that we offer is an opportunity for students to go through a learning assessment. And the idea is for them to learn how they learn best. Um, so I think what we take for granted is, you know, it depends, we, we're coming in from a number of different um, academic backgrounds, you know, um, and that's not only in terms of curriculum, but also in terms of learning techniques. Um, you know, whether that be, you know, the teaching, um, of, you know, the teaching techniques that have been used, you know, throughout different curriculums and the learning techniques that students have been doing, um, you know, ever since they've been probably young kids. And sometimes you don't even realize it. I haven't realized it. Um, and then what you what you come to understand through this assessment is actually it's important for you to learn how you learn best because there are a number of different learning preferences and we're all human at the end of the day. Um, you know, we're not identical. People are completely different. You know, you have different strengths, you have different weaknesses and it's when you learn how you learn best. Um, and that's when you're fully supported as Chloe was saying by the Department of Educational Services, um, you know, by the Department of um, Career, um, by the Department of Career Guidance as well. Um, you know, it's, it's through that and through that unparalleled support that you will be able to achieve your fullest potential. You know, there's unparalleled support being offered but without a doubt the students themselves so putting in, um, you know, all the effort as well and really, um, you know, reaping the success. Brilliant. Thank you. There's a question about um, clinical rotations and placements. I think the students wondering um, how many they might be able to do in their time there and how it's kind of determined. Chloe, do you want to talk about how many rotations you've done? Uh, yeah, um, so basically um, there's a certain amount of weeks that you have to complete with the rotations. So if you, I believe it's, I can't remember from the top. It's yeah, 40 it's 42. The first year and then it's 38 the second. So 38 weeks, there we go. So the second part of the clinical rotations is 38 weeks and you can split that up however you like. But if you do want to do some in America, you have to take the step. Um, because I didn't have any plans to work in America, I didn't take the step and I did my full 38 weeks in the UK. Uh, however, you can, you know, like I said, you can split it up, you can do some there, some here. Um, and the hospitals, you know, there's some in London, some out of London, so you can get a wide clinical experience. Yeah, and with the US, obviously, you know, the hospitals are in a number of different states. Uh, we've had students who have taken like multiple rotations. So students have taken like up to eight rotations. There are students who have repeated rotations. Um, so there's a lot of detail when it goes there. Like without a doubt, if you visit our website um, and you can learn so much about the different clinical rotations. And then also like if you go onto YouTube and, and check our videos, um, you'll see videos uh, specific to, you know, clinical rotations rotation experiences and that really gives you a, an understanding because you know there are there are students who who are doing their rotations in the US and there are students who are doing their rotations in the UK so yeah and you can essentially pick anything that you want to do your rotations in um, for the 38 weeks so it's whatever you kind of interests you I think that's actually really useful. We've got one final one coming in from Brahim from YouTube, um, a very generic one, just asking, how can I reserve a place within the universities? I think you covered that where you said that you can apply um, either via SIUK or you can contact Bethana. All of her details are on the screen. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll still be able to see um, her contact email address on the screen. So I've put um, our email address, the SIUK one as well, on YouTube, which is info at studyin-uk.com. Yeah, so just contact um, either the university or ourselves and we'll be able to help you. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, Bethana. Uh, no, so no, so just a quick recap in terms of how the process is for international students. Once you submit a full application with the full supporting documents, you'll go under initial review, and it's at that point if successful, you'll be awarded an interview, which will be a virtual interview with an SGU alumni. And then once that is completed, it takes about two weeks' time for a final decision to be made. Uh, hopefully if all goes well and you are offered a place at SGU to reserve your place you will need to play you will need to um, place a deposit payment um, and that's within about a month of, of your offer being issued but you know as Ravina said uh, we're all here to support you whether you reach out to myself or reach out to our uh, fantastic partners SIUK uh, please feel free to do so. 
Brilliant. Thank you both so much. I can see the students are putting in their thank yous as well in the chat. So um, yeah, I don't reckon there are any more questions. Just before we wrap up the presentation for today, I was just wondering if you wanted to give students like a main takeaway or any points you kind of want to re-emphasize before we end the talk. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Ravina. Well, first of all, what I'd like to say is a big thank you to each and every one of you, um, you know, uh, whether that be you yourself, your, you know, students who are joining us today from all around the world. Um, you know, a big thank you to each and every one of you for taking time out of your days today to attend the presentation. Um, you know, your choice of a school um, of medicine is going to be the most important decision you make, as I said, and um, truly, we are all here to support you in making that choice. Um, I think, you know, the big takeaway without a doubt is if you are interested in um, studying medicine abroad, you know, if you're particularly interested in the US pathway, if you've got some interest in the UK pathway, you know, we are definitely the best choice for you, you know, with exceptional um, residency placement, with outstanding USMLE, with unparalleled student support services. You know, every presentation we do, we always have an alumni or a current student join us because no one speaks of a university better than, you know, a student. Um, and I think, you know, Chloe, um, you know, thank you, Chloe, for taking your time out of your day uh, today. Uh, but, you know, you, you've heard how it's been for Chloe. Um, so again, you know, anything you need, um, any questions you have, please feel free. Otherwise, um, I look forward to really um, hearing from you hopefully soon, because I know you'll have so many more questions. Um, you know, it's never that simple when it comes to medicine. I know you, your parents, you know, your friend, your cousins, um, everyone will have so many questions. So please do feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, a big thank you to SIUK for organizing this event and a, a big thank you again to Chloe for joining us today. Chloe, was there anything you'd like to add? Um, no, not really. Just if you're really um, contemplating it, um, you know, you don't need, really need to hesitate. Um, I didn't meet anybody in Grenada who was having a bad experience. Everybody loved it. Um, family members loved it. You know, and we just want to be safe and comfortable when we're studying. And I can 100% recommend SGU for that. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Ravina and Rabia, and thank you everyone for joining us today. I'll leave it with you, Ravina. Thanks for your time. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, bye. Okay, we'll bye. Very shortly.